welcome to my kitchen once again. Uh, today we're going to be making a recipe called chole. This is traditionally a recipe of North India and this is something you would find in restaurants quite a bit, just called chole. And it starts with, it's basically a chickpea dish. So I have here just canned, one can of chickpeas. I open the can, rinse them out, get all the salt off of it. Um, and then I also have two tomatoes diced. And mine look a bit mushier just because my tomatoes were frozen originally and then I chopped them up. But fresh, same amount, two tomatoes diced. And then just other various things. We put some onions. This is half an onion diced. I have two cloves of garlic, also diced. We're doing a lot of dicing. <laughs> and then just uh, various spices and we'll go through that as we go through the recipe. So, to start, turn on the stove. This is a little mini pressure cooker that I actually got from India, but if you have a larger one, I think they're like this high, that's fine too. So my stove is on, and I'm going to put into here um, maybe like two or three tablespoons of oil. You want a good amount because you're sautéing onions, and if you don't have enough, then the onions will just stick. The oil has sufficiently heated. It took a while because this pot is quite thick. Um, you know it's heated when you drop, we're using uh, cumin seeds, when you drop some of the cumin seeds in and, they, and you see bubbles, that's when you'll know that it's heated. So uh, to here we're going to add half, let's say about half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Once they've browned, probably if your oil is hot enough in like 20 seconds, 25 seconds, they'll be good to go. I'm going to add a pinch, very little. And I've used this before in other recipes. It's called asafoetida powder. In Hindi, you call this hing. And you can get it at the Indian store. So just a pinch of that goes right into the oil. It's got kind of a very pungent, garlicky scent to it. Some people don't like it. I actually really do like it. And then right after, you're going to add um, same amount, about half a teaspoon of turmeric. And I've used turmeric before in other recipes too. It's it's uh, very orange and it will stain, so just be careful where you put it. And now I'm going to add my half diced onion. So this is one half of a large onion diced, and put it right in. And so we gotta let these saute for a while until they've kind of turned a bit brown. So maybe like three, four minutes and you'll be done. The onion has finished browning and to this I'm gonna add two cloves of garlic diced. The reason I waited is I, I tend to not cook garlic too much because I find if you cook it too much it turns a bit bitter. So I, I put it in when the onions are almost done. Now I suppose right now we'll just go ahead and add a tomato as well. So as I said before, this is two large tomatoes diced. Hear that? Magic. Essentially what we're doing is we're just making a tomato gravy and we'll add all our spices right into this tomato gravy and then we'll add the chickpeas. And you'll find that in a lot of North Indian dishes, the base for the curries is a tomato gravy. And then you just switch up the vegetables. Or, I mean, in some cases, you can have chicken or lamb or some kind of um, meat. So we've just got to let these tomatoes simmer a while. And then we'll start to add some spices. Okay, so this gravy has been simmering on high for about a good five to seven minutes. And it's really condensed and lost a lot of water, which is what you want. So this is what it looks like. So you can see that everything is blended together really well. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I have the chickpeas in. I'm also going to add to this, I'm just going to put it off the stove so it doesn't burn. I'm going to add about half a cup of water into here. To start, I may need to add more after, but for now, about half a cup. Because when you pressure cook or something, you need some liquid. Uh, okay. And I meant to say, also, if you don't have a pressure cooker and you still want to make this dish, you can always just 
do it in a pot and the point is to just give the chickpeas time to soften so you could just close the lid and let it simmer the, with the pressure cooker it's just a bit faster a bit easier anyhow okay so let's add our spices now um, I'm going to put into this much, I'm going to put in about one tablespoon of salt, not a heaping tablespoon. So, add that in. I'm also going to add some tomato paste, and this will just give it some more body. So, add, uh, oh, and I should turn my stove down too, otherwise we're going to splatter everywhere. Add just about maybe half a teaspoon to three quarter teaspoon of tomato paste. to add uh, about half or one quarter to half a teaspoon of red chili powder. Now if you like things spicier, just double that amount or maybe by one and a half times. So you can add a good half teaspoon to three quarter, but I think three quarter would be too much. At most I would say half a teaspoon of red chili powder. I'm also going to add the same amount of ground coriander. This is a mixture of ground coriander and ground cumin. I'm adding half a teaspoon of that. If you don't have the mixture um, mixed together like this, just add one quarter teaspoon of each. Just stir it up. The last thing, or one of the last things you can add is garam masala. And I think most people know what that is. You can get that in a good grocery store. Just add a pinch of it, less than a quarter teaspoon, very little. Or again, if you like things spicier, then this will heat it up, so put a little bit more of it. I'm just putting a pinch. And then the very last thing, and some people might find this odd, but I'm gonna put a pinch of sugar, very little. Normally in North Indian cooking, it's meant to be a little sour, you don't need to put sugar. But I find with all the tomato and the tomato paste, it gets a bit sour tasting. So I like to put just a, just a pinch of sugar, less than a quarter teaspoon. And then the very last thing, and this is important, it's a good thing I remembered, is uh, some ginger. So I'm going to put in about half a teaspoon of ground grated ginger. Now because I'm going to be shutting the lid on this and cooking it in the pressure cooker, I'm going to add another half a cup of water, maybe three quarter cup, one quarter cup of water, maybe not a full half cup. So uh, this is about the consistency you want just before you shut the lid on it and cook it in the pressure cooker, so there's some liquid to it. If you are using a pressure cooker like this, you basically want to close the lid, put it on the stove, put your whistle on, and let the pressure cooker heat up to a point where it's fully pressurized, and then your, uh, your whistle, or this bit on top, will start to turn. And you just want to let it stay like that on the stove, probably for a good five to seven minutes, so cooking at full pressure. Okay, so we're done. Here's our finished product. Uh, usually, I mean, what would be really nice if you could serve this on a bed of rice? Usually with um, Indian food, you would always use basmati rice, and that is readily available at all grocery stores these days. You could also eat it with some naan or uh, roti or chapati or whatever, and um, it makes a great meal. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this segment, and happy cooking!